Welcome to Followers Worship this week. What is something that has been passed down in your family? I have a ring that came from my great aunt to my mother to me. I have my father's and mother's work ethics as well. And I know others who have land or homes that might have been in their family for generations or a particular talent that's been passed down and seems to be inherited along with their last name. Everyone gets and gives some sort of legacy. It might be an object, a characteristic, a talent, or even a business. It might be a very good thing. And legacies can also be very negative, such as addictions, bad habits, and debt. Rick says, all of us want our lives to count for something. We want to leave a lasting legacy, but there are conflicting ideas about how to do that. So today we assess what the Bible says about building a life that honors God, and we take some lessons from one man's lifelong quest to build his cathedral of faith. But the big question is, what's your cathedral of faith? So what is the story they're going to tell about you after you've gone? It won't be, oh, he worked so much overtime, or it was amazing how much television she watched. <laughs> Your spiritual legacy will be the things that outlive you, the values embraced by your kids, the friendships that you've offered others, the example you set for your neighbors, the kindnesses that you showed to those who don't deserve it, and the service that you give to God. The stories at your funeral will reflect that legacy, and we hope that they will also reflect your devotion to God and his church. Our story is just a continuation of his story.
God directed his people to share their stories. In our reading today, the scripture says, each generation needs to tell its children of God's mighty acts and power. So as you listen to these words, please reflect. Are you sharing the story? I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name every day, for no one can measure your greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts and proclaim your power. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue, and everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. You are good to everyone and shower compassion on all your creatures, so your faithful followers will praise you. We will speak of the glory of your kingdom and give examples of your power. We will tell about your mighty deeds and about the majesty and glory of your reign. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and you always keep your promises. You're gracious in all you do. You help the fallen and lift those bent underneath their loads, so the eyes of all look to you in hope. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. You're filled with kindness and close to those who call on you. I will praise the Lord, and may everyone on earth bless his holy name forever. When it comes to legacy, there is no greater, grander, or more godly one than the one passed down for 2,000 years by Jesus. He is our anchor, our very cornerstone.
We are a church that believes in the power of stories. Over the years, we have encouraged people to write down what God has done for them and to document the times that God has clearly intervened to save the day. Part of our legacy should be that ongoing affirmation about what we believe and why we believe it. If you have never written down how Jesus has changed your life or an instance of God's obvious care for you, please consider doing that. Our stories can be meaningful memories and inspiration for the next generation, or even the one after that.
eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Come on! I believe. We recognize that despite all of the evil and the darkness in this world, you have still surrounded us with beauty and with blessings and with truth. Truth about who you are and the steadfast love with which you approach us all, even when we don't deserve it. Lord, we're grateful for all the things you've provided, for not only our physical world, but the spiritual blessings found in Christ, the Church, your Word and your spirit, which molds and makes us into the image of your Son. Lord, we pray that you would make us more submissive, more obedient, more open and available to what it is that you want for us and from us. And Lord, we thank you that you have been so ever-loving and steadfast in your commitment to us. Our prayer is that we would do the same, that we would open ourselves up to being everything that you intended for us from the very beginning. And we're thankful that you not only allow us to pour out our hearts, but also that you act and move and work in our hearts and our circumstances. And so we pray that you would be acting in all of the ways that only you can to resolve the issues and the turmoil and the trouble that we face. And at the same time, Lord, we want to thank you for all that you are doing even now. And we're grateful that you have provided for us a need for purpose and the ability to sense you through your creation. We know that you have planted within us the seeds of eternity. And so we ask that you would help us to look beyond the tangible and the temporary to those things which will last forever. And we're grateful that you have given us the biggest and the best legacy of all. And that is the ability to be with you forever because of the sacrifice of your Son. Make us truly grateful, Lord, grateful enough to live for you this week. Amen. U.S. President Ulysses S. Grant is usually considered one of the weakest, most ineffective of America's presidents, but he was known as a great soldier and his men sometimes referred to him as the dust-covered man because he would go out on the battlefield with his men and he wasn't afraid to scout ahead of the troops and see what they would be facing the next day. Grant would put himself in danger if he was expecting his men to put themselves in danger. As a president, he wasn't great, and he ended up apologizing to Congress as he left office for all of his errors in judgment. 
but Grant gets a lot of credit for bringing in the 1875 Civil Rights Act that affirmed the equality of all. It became part of the dust-covered man's legacy long after his death. Christians have a blood-covered man, and he offers a legacy to us. Jesus was beaten and tortured and died a brutal death on a cross in order to pay for sins that we have committed and continue to commit. He ventured into territory before us and looked death in the face in an act that assures us our passing from this life is not the end. Each week we remember and honor that legacy, his actions, and his love for all. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your willingness to go ahead of us, for the power of your resurrection and the legacy of your cross. Bless these emblems for those who have them today, and let us remember you until we come together again. Amen. shall be our meditation to gather in that shadow as the sun went down to weep with those who thought that you were leaving you were leaving Humble King who never wore an earthly crown. To steal away at night when they took down your body. With love and tears. To leave you in a borrowed grave To go with Mary to that place they laid you Where they laid you, Jesus And in the morning find a stone was rolled Heaven's praises silent in those hours of darkness Your Holy Spirit brooding round that empty throne Until the declaration He is risen you are risen, Jesus. He is not dead. Behold, He lives forevermore. Hey, the cross, oh, the wonderful cross. Oh, what glory, what victory.
This week's blessing includes some simple instructions from God about leaving a spiritual legacy in this world. The words are from Deuteronomy 6, verses 5, 6, and 7. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, and when you're getting up. Now that gives us something to work on for the week. Have a great one. And now here's Rick with your Cathedral of Faith. In the center of Spain, in a small town near the city of Madrid, stands a powerful testimony to one man's intense faith and devotion. It's a hand-built, one-of-a-kind cathedral, made almost entirely of cast-offs and recycled materials. It's the product of daily work by a single Christian, who sometimes got some help from a few friends as he worked for 60 years, from sunrise to sunset, every day except Sunday, between 1961 and 2021. There is nothing in the world like it. The story I'm about to share with you really resonates with me and I think there are a couple of reasons. First, I just retired after teaching university for 25 years. Second, this is the 20th anniversary of followers which has prompted a lot of thinking back and looking forward. I've been reflecting a lot on legacy, what it is that we leave behind when we're done. And I think this story of the Cathedral of Faith, as it's called, really holds some powerful lessons for all of us. And if some of this sounds a bit familiar, it's probably because about a year ago, I told you about another Spanish cathedral done by the great architect Antony Gaudí. But this one has much more relevance for you and me, and it poses a question. What is it that you're building in your life? The story of the cathedral is the story of Justo Gallego Martinez, who was born in 1925 to a prosperous farm couple. His mother was especially devout, and she instilled her faith in her son, teaching him the Bible. But the Spanish Civil War broke out in 1936, and Justo saw communist forces shoot clergy and ransack the local church. Undeterred, he went into a Trappist monastery as a young man with other would-be monks. Lo que yo recuerdo bien, y también quizá un, la misma la comunidad, la comunidad le quería mucho también, porque era un hombre que se dejaba querer, un hombre que creaba tensiones, no creaba en la comunidad. Lo que pasa es que al final Mía, como digo, no encajó. El hombre no encajó porque pues, la cuestión de los ayunos, a veces ayunaba demasiado, luego el trabajo, tenía, hacía mucho trabajo físico, y nosotros temíamos por el tema de su salud, sobre, sobre todo su salud mental. Seven years into his service, and just before his final vows, Justo got tuberculosis and had to go to a hospital in Madrid to recover. But when he was well again, his brothers wouldn't let him back into the monastery, either because of his extremism or their concerns about his health. But Justo had promised God that after recovery, he would build a chapel as a sign of gratitude. So on October 12, 1961, he started building on land he inherited from his parents. From the very beginning, his motives were thankfulness and an intense desire to honor God. So what are the motives behind what you're building? Because what drives you will determine what you build and how you build. Some people have a great need for recognition, wealth, power, and reputation. They put their names on buildings and charitable foundations and pour themselves into their work. But it's also about leaving something behind. And that's why so many people devote themselves to their children, their businesses, and community impact. It's understandable, but Ecclesiastes says, don't let the excitement of youth cause you to forget your Creator. 
Honor Him before the door to life's opportunities is closed and the sound of work fades. Revere God and obey Him, for He will judge us for all we do, good or bad. Besides, as John says in the New Testament, nothing physical will last. So don't love this world or what it offers, for then you don't have the Father's love in you. The world offers only a yearning for pleasure and for all we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. But this world is fading away with everything people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. So like Husto, we must build our lives on gratitude, devotion to God, and a deep desire to pay forward the blessings we've received. The only things of value we leave behind are our faith and the way in which we influence the people around us. We touch other people and we shape their lives and then they in turn pass that influence on to the next generation and maybe even the generation after that. We impart the image of Christ through faith, character, and service. But it all comes down to love and how we treat other people, especially those who don't deserve our love. And the second lesson from Husto's life is that setbacks are opportunities. God often uses challenges to teach us, set us on a new course, or show us a better way. Had Husto become a monk, the cathedral wouldn't have happened. And as we'll see, that cathedral has done a lot of good. So as we make plans for our lives, let's be careful not to be so set in our ways that even God can't interrupt us, let alone guide us. He speaks to us through His Word, His Spirit, and His people, the Church. And when we're willing to listen, He always has lots to say. Just don't be afraid to launch out in faith when you do hear from Him. The amazing thing about Justo's Cathedral project is that the Spaniard had absolutely no training in architecture, design, or the trades. There was no blueprint or formal plans, and the project just evolved over time, depending on the opportunities and inspiration that came to Justo. And he didn't do anything by half measures. The building is enormous, as big as a typical cathedral. It includes a complex of small chapels, a crypt, and a giant 130-foot dome modeled after the one on St. Peter's Basilica. More astonishing is that most of the materials and tools used in the cathedral are recycled. In recent years, Husto used surplus materials donated by a local construction company, but most of the building is improvised because he had nothing. Entonces el que hace, pues él utiliza, como veis aquí, est estas, estas jambas que tiene el pilar, no es una decoración que lo es finalmente, sino que es el, el borde de los botes de pintura que utiliza para encofrar, por ejemplo. ¿no? Eh, los ladrillos que veis en las torres son ladrillos todos recogidos de fábricas de cerámica y él dice, dadme los ladrillos malos. Dice, no toma los buenos, no, no, que los malos, que los buenos no los quiero, que quiero los malos, los que te sobran. Los buenos véndelos, porque yo quiero trabajar con materiales que no te sirvan, ¿no? Justo desde el principio tiene, digamos, la necesidad de hacer, a mi juicio, una obra para los pobres y quiere que ese concepto nazca de la propia construcción. Y entonces él no quiere cosas nuevas, quiere cosas viejas. Justo had a trust that God would bless whatever he offered. He could have led a very comfortable life, but he sold or rented his inherited land to finance his vision. Son cosas naturales de la persona que tiene un, un ideal y quiere que, que el honor del Señor sea el primero. Y para eso hay que trabajar de esta manera. La cosa no tiene una manera de hacer, hay varias. Y siempre se hace que salga bella, económica y rápida. Y hay que buscar. Si usted es inteligente, lo resuelve con otra, otra más fácil, a lo mejor. No hay cosa mejor que hacer algo para el creador. ¿Lo has comprendido? Todo el mundo profeta del Señor. That includes us. 
The message is, use what you have to honor God, your talent, time, money, experience, and opportunities. Each of us can build a legacy of faith and service with things this world has cast aside, like humility, our own brokenness, and our sacrifice for others. And we shouldn't worry about our own skill and talent. If God shows us a work He wants us to do, He'll equip us for it. He's in charge anyway. As Psalm 127.1 says, unless the Lord builds, the work of the builders is wasted. And here's another nugget of wisdom from Justo. He ido aquí siempre tirando para adelante. Aunque había cosas imperfectas, no me preocupaba. Yo me he adelantado las cosas. En vez de estar aquí, me he ido para allá. Y claro, si yo no ando así, pues no tenía ahora ni las paredes. So often, we wait to act when God calls us because we don't think we can do the job well enough or we wait for conditions to be perfect. And of course, they never are. Ecclesiastes 11.4 says, Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. And by extension, if we wait until we or the conditions are ideal for whatever God wants us to build, we'll never get anything done. Instead, we need trust and submission. Be strong and immovable, says 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know nothing you do for Him is ever useless. It's worth noting that locals called Justo the madman of the cathedral. He was scorned and laughed at and considered a religious lunatic. But Justo didn't need approval because he had purpose. And that's something we should all imitate. And you know, slowly, Justo's feverish devotion inspired respect and then admiration and donations. The media started to pay attention, and Justo was even invited to give a presentation at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. He said no because he had too much work to do. Maybe you're watching this video and thinking, that cathedral is a complete waste of time and effort. Justo could have been serving the poor or doing any number of things to improve the lives of others. But remember, that's exactly the attitude some of the 12 had when they criticized Mary for anointing the feet of Jesus with an expensive perfume instead of selling it for the poor. In essence, he says, leave her alone and mind your own business. Don't let others deter you when you're building something in your life to honor God. But don't judge others and what they offer either. You may not understand what they're doing. It may not be your preference. Maybe you even think it's crazy. But it's not about you. It's about honoring God. Anything that honors Him or inspires others to pursue faith in their own way counts. And Husto has done all of that. His devotion has prompted support for his project and inspired many to pursue their own personal mission because people respond to passion and conviction. It's to act like this man is something you can't see, you can't see, you don't know if it exists or not. It's just something you believe, more than everything else, than everything else, material, physical, It reminds me of 1 Peter 3, which says, Worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, be ready to explain it, but in a gentle and respectful way. As Justo's vision continued, people felt compelled to help. And to his credit, the builder was willing to accept that help when it was offered. A local man named Angel Lopez was inspired enough to sign on as a helper. His name means angel, and he has been a ministering angel to Justo. In the same way, we have to avoid pride or turf battles that might entice us to reject help when we work to honor God in our lives. After all, God brought us together in the church precisely so we could offer love and support to each other. 
In fact, God wants us to find our vision and purpose in and through the church, where we find help, encouragement, and accountability. As I said in my recent Integrity Sermon, the New Testament talks about the church being a temple or a building, of which each of us is a part. So we need to be intentional about building in our lives together with a common purpose and a common passion. The legacy we leave should be connected with the lives of other believers. In the church too, it's not about numbers, real estate, budgets, popularity, and reputation. The real question is, what are we building together to honor God and bless His creatures? In 2021, at age 96, Husto donated his cathedral to a non-governmental organization called Messengers of Peace, which does aid work around the world. The group committed to finishing Husto's work and great gains have already been made. The organization quickly cleaned up the mess, reinforced arches and put up walls. They also sent in some of Spain's top structural engineers who were amazed at how carefully the place had been built. But as the changes happened, there was a sense that some of Husto's original vision was missing. Instead of being an oasis for the poor, the building was in many ways a monument to the organization who came in at the very end. The Messengers of Peace say they want the cathedral to be an open space where Muslims, Jews, and Christians of all kinds can meet and find common ground. But it will not be a church as Husto wanted. Husto died on November 28, 2021. Though he wanted to be buried in the crypt he'd built in the cathedral, he was interred in a local cemetery because the crypt didn't meet sanitation standards. Sometimes the vision, work, and legacy we pursue isn't gonna work out exactly the way we want. Back in Ecclesiastes, Solomon talks about working our whole lives to build something, only to have it go to rack and ruin after we die. In the end, it's really not about results. It's about what God chooses to do with whatever we offer. So learn from Husto. Build your life on gratitude. Remember that setbacks are opportunities. Use what you have to honor God. Don't worry about doing everything perfectly. and trust God will bless whatever you offer. Don't let others deter you from offering God what you can, but don't judge what they offer either. Remember that passion and commitment will inspire others. But don't be too proud or territorial to accept help as you build your life. And be aware your vision and plans may not always work out the way you expect, either because of God or the involvement of other people. But all that matters is our faithfulness to our Father, whatever people think. One last thing. Ironically, 
town officials renamed the street the cathedral stands on to honor the builder, the other builder, Gaudi. But Husto would have let that slide. His work was never about pride or vanity. And here's something to take with you. Que recuerde la gente de mí. Sí. Bueno, realmente es un apostolado. Yo creo que para que me me recuerden y escarmiente que soy un cristiano. Con eso ya vale. ¿eh? Siendo un cristiano ya me conformo. Un buen cristiano. May it be so with the Jabas. Build on, my friends. Build on.